Hello and welcome to the Monday, July 29th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Friday, we got a quick diary by Xavier about a relatively new PowerShell script that he found has a low virus total score of 8 out of 65. But at least you know, some antivirus tools are recognizing this particular malware. It's a fairly straightforward PowerShell downloader. The two binaries it will then download is command.exe and service.exe, obviously trying to fit in with uh, these common system file names. These are actually then self-extracting archives that will extract additional uh, software. There is a specific uh, domain that's being used here as a command control channel, solarbx.online. But Xavier hasn't at this point been uh, totally able to really figure out what the components that the command.exe unpacks to are actually doing. The service.exe part is easier. Uh, that's a standard Excel stealer. And as we have seen quite a bit, it's actually a compiled Python script. It does use Discord as a command and control channel. And with all the talk a week ago about blue screens of death, uh, one of the confusions was often how to interpret these blue screen of death messages. Well, Didi has some hints here how to practice responding to blue screens of death. Sys Internals, part of Microsoft, has a little tool called Not My Fault. The purpose of this tool is, well, to crash your system. You can crash a system and select uh, different reasons why the system crashed. Now, careful here, the system will actually crash and uh, you will lose any data that you had in open applications. But the real value of the tool is once it comes back, you can use your wind debug and uh, blue screen view tools in order to analyze uh, what happened in the crash. So it's a good practice here to figure out if you can find root causes and such if you have to analyze a system that blue screened. A few years ago, some private keys that Intel used in order to sign a BIOS updates and the like were leaked as part of sample codes. Now, these keys were specifically labeled as do not trust. That's at least their issuer. But still, it appears that a couple of motherboard manufacturers have used these keys to sign their firmware. So these systems trust firmware signed with these leaked keys, which of course makes it then easy to circumvent secure boot. Affected systems include Lenovo as well as MSI, and with that, a vast number of different systems. In particular, of course, MSI is often used by other manufacturers for motherboards, and with that, these systems are then also vulnerable. Binary, who found this issue, has published a detailed report, including a tool that allows you to figure out if your system is affected. Dell, for example, relies on AMI motherboards and was vulnerable, but has released updates since to mitigate this vulnerability. So make sure that your firmware is up to date. Also, always make sure that you're not accepting firmware from suspicious sources. Only go to the manufacturer of your PC directly in order to download any critical updates like this. The main risk here is that you either willingly install malicious firmware, for example, that comes disguised as an update, or the sort of evil mate scheme where you leave your device unattended and someone has access to it and is then able to flash it with malicious firmware. A little bit of follow-up on the CrowdStrike issue from a week ago looks, according to Ars Technica, that now 97% of affected systems are back online. Not sure if the remaining 3% will ever come online. Microsoft also has chimed in in trying to 
convince manufacturers of security software to not write kernel drivers anymore. Microsoft sort of committed to provide the necessary APIs to not require this type of kernel driver for security software. Of course, that's a little bit of political issue here. Microsoft wanted to actually outright not allow kernel drivers but that wasn't really allowed in particular in Europe due to some uh, anti-competitiveness uh, issues. I think what Microsoft is going for now is more sort of a voluntary removal of kernel drivers by offering uh, solid APIs that just make them not necessary. Too early to say whether or not uh, this will really work out the way Microsoft thinks, uh, but uh, maybe something good will come out of this disaster after all. And well, uh, that's it for today. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for liking this podcast. Thanks for subscribing uh, to it. This podcast should be available on all standard uh, podcast outlets, also available on YouTube and via Amazon's Flash Briefing. That's it. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.